in the presence of God. Let's stand in the I invite Jesus to move in this service tonight. Speak to our hearts and speak to our souls. Father God, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to, to worship you, to praise you tonight. We ask you, Lord, to move in this service by your spirit and power. We ask you, Lord, to touch our praise tonight, touch our worship tonight, and touch the preaching of your word. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. At this time, they're going to sing a few songs as unto the Lord. Keep praising, keep worshiping, and let's worship in the singing of the songs tonight and worship him in spirit and in truth. God bless you tonight. Check one, two. There we go. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this day. Amen. We hope and pray everybody's doing well out there. Amen. If you grab a song hymn tonight, amen. Page 445 of your song books tonight. Amen. I'll be satisfied. land above. Hold on, folks. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This thing gave me some trouble here. We'll try it again. All right, all right. All right. Phone hit the lane. Wow. All right. Operating difficulties.
to worship the Lord tonight, glorify him, magnify him, and thank him. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus Christ tonight. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your love, for your power. We thank you, Lord, for the moving of your spirit that's already here. And we ask you, Lord, to lock our minds, lock our hearts and spirits upon you tonight. Let us be stirred up in our heart and stir up ourselves to receive of you tonight. Let our hearts, Father God, be open and ready to receive of your word, receive of your power tonight. And we ask you, Lord, to raise our expectation, raise our faith level to receive of what you have for us tonight. And we ask you, Lord, to let your name be glorified and magnified. Touch, Lord, those that are in the house tonight. Touch those that will watch online and tune in. And we ask you, Lord, to let the word of God find searching hearts searching souls that they may know and come into a reality of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Continue to worship the Lord, church. You know what? There's Worship is God's part of the service, amen? And we ought to worship him. We have so much to be thankful for, amen? Many times we aren't thankful for stuff until it's gone. 
But how about giving God praise for things right now and giving him glory for things right now for all that he has done? You may be seated tonight. At this time, we're going to worship the Lord in our giving. And uh, we want to give a good offering as unto the Lord tonight as well as uh, pay our tithes, tenth as unto the Lord of those things which he gives us. And this is that opportunity to worship the Lord in our giving tonight. We'll pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity uh, to give you a portion of that which you've given to us. We ask you right now to bless both the gift and the giver. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We also want to let you know you can donate uh, through the Facebook page. You hit that uh, Shop Now button, I think it is, at this point. And uh, you can donate and give there. Or you can go to our website uh, at myntcc.org forward slash Brooklyn, New York. And uh, you can give that way as well. We'll, we'll uh, at this time, collect the offer. Thank you for your giving tonight. Amen. We're going to get a show inside here. It's been a while since we've done it. Amen. But joy as unto the Lord. Amen.
thankful for the joy of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, which is our strength tonight. Amen. Truly, we are blessed tonight by his goodness tonight. Amen. I'd like to say again, thank you for your giving tonight. May the Lord truly bless you. Continue to uh, uh, give us unto the Lord. Uh, amen. And support the work of the Lord here. Again, and that's how you receive your blessing. As you being a blessing to God, he blesses you back. And so, again, we do it because we love the Lord as well. You do it. You give because, most importantly, because you love God. Amen. Through you giving. So we say thank you tonight. And next Thursday, next Thursday, the 23rd, we're looking forward to what God's going to do here. Plan on having a special service that Thursday evening, next Thursday evening. So bring your friends and family for our Christmas celebration. We celebrate the, uh, again, birth of Christ as we come and as a congregation before that wonderful day of Christmas. And so come be with us next Thursday evening. And also this weekend, we're looking forward to what God's going to do. Amen. I want to uh, draw your attention as well. Again, uh, to continue to pray for, pray for uh, the Fuller family. We got a chance to do a funeral. Uh, again, I'm not calling it a good chance, but it was a chance to do a funeral and, and send the gospel out to a family there. And uh, there's the young lady who passed away again from cancer, battling, and so she leaves behind three children, three tr well, actually four children, four children. Amen. And, and the grandmother's left with a heavy load, and so we continue to lift up Tracy Fuller and the family there. And uh, Sister uh, D. Isaac, as she continues to recover from surgery, and so many others that have asked for prayer, we continue to do that. We know the, the power of God, so we uh, be, uh, we know that through mentioning your name, and, and we continue to lift you up in prayers. We have many and women join us in that effort. And also be praying for this weekend, Mother Also Weekend, as we close out 2021, looking forward to what God's going to do in the days ahead. Amen. I want to uh, bring out of the book of Jude tonight, the book of Jude chapters. Well, it's only one chapter, actually. So, verses seventeen through, verses seventeen through twenty-five, we'll look at tonight. Jude seventeen uh, through twenty-five. The Bible says, "Beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there will be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts." He says, "These are they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit." He says, but you, beloved, are building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God. He says, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. He says, and, and some having compassion, making a difference. He said, others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now to him that is able to uh, keep you from falling, he says, uh, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy and the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, power, uh, both now and forever. Amen. But I want to draw your attention. Um, again, this verse is a powerful verse. The Bible says in verse 22, it says, and some having compassion, making a difference. 23, he says, and some other say before, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. And I want to uh, use this in another thought as we uh, uh, lies in the heart earlier about sharing the blessing or being a blessing. Sharing the blessing or being a blessing. Amen. Reverend Johnson, if you're open in prayer, please. Amen. Amen. Sharing a blessing or being a blessing. Uh, I got a chance. Uh, I was listening uh, to someone earlier and it was uh, one of them financial guys. And, and he actually was one of his on his from his YouTube channel. And he was he, he the headline was he gave away ten thousand dollars in tips 
$10,000 in tips to various waitresses around the city and around the waiters and waitresses around the city and to see their, 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 their tears stream down these waitresses' eyes when they saw the tip on the receipt, Carlos. It was amazing. To see them, how they, again, a $1,000 tip and a $2,000 tip and all these different things that he was given just really to give back and really he was just saying, I just want to be a blessing because, again, I've been blessed. And I, I really touched my heart about that and how them, Again, he was willing to give back because he had been given so much. Again, I guess you would say financially, and so he was wanting to just give back in this giving season. We're in a giving season now. It should be a season always in our hearts of giving. You think about this time of year where, again, you think about, uh, again, we uh, look at uh, the birth of Christ and we celebrate Christmas, and uh, again, the malls are full and all these different places, the stores, and now it's all here about gifts and all these different things and new sales and all these different things. Black Friday just passed, and you buy this, buy this for the new upcoming season of giving. But you know what? In, in life, it should always be a, a season of giving for us. And so we look at this about being a blessing or, or sharing a blessing tonight. Again, uh, again, you think about being saved is a blessing. To be saved and know Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior is uh, 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 the ultimate blessing of them all. As we celebrate, as we said, the greatest gift of all has come. We celebrate, uh, again, has came to the earth to give his life for us, which is such a blessing for all of mankind. It was a blessing, and so uh, we look at this and we think about the grace and the mercy of Almighty God and how that, again, we should always look back on that and say, man, that was such a blessing, and we're so blessed because we are saved tonight. And you look at this, uh, uh, when you begin to keep this as an attitude of gratitude in your heart, again, uh, you, it will make you want to share the blessing as well. It will make you want to share this blessing to know that you don't want to keep it to yourself. You don't want to keep it to yourself. And so in this season of giving, let's tell others about Jesus. Those watching online today, share it out. Share out the videos. Share out the, uh, uh, the, the social media links and all the different things. Share out some flyers with men and women. Share a blessing. Be a blessing to somebody else in our world today. So we see, again, uh, as we look back over this season that we're in now, how the heavens adored the coming of the Lord. The stars and the angels adored the coming because they knew the blessing that he would bring. They knew the blessing that he would pour out to all of mankind. That men and women's lives would be changed. Uh, and so heavens adored him. The angels adored him. The animals adored who this coming king was, as the Bible tells us. So this it impacted the world, and, and, and as we have, again, it been impacted, and as others have been impacted, let us share the blessings. Uh, many times during the ministry, or whatever the case may be, uh, we see that how the, we, we, we share others about uh, the miracles of God. And, and on and on and on, and, and as you look at this, the ministry of Christ, uh, how did he many times would tell them, don't say anything about it. <laughs> Can you imagine this? Throughout the Gospels, after he grew up and after he went out for uh, uh, for three years of his ministry, really probably all his life he was being a blessing to somebody. But through that three years that was recorded of his adult life and his ministry, uh, oftentimes he would tell the people when he did something for them, don't tell anybody about it. Don't share it. And many times, it's probably especially the first time that you read him, you say, why in the world would he tell them not to share this information? There's many examples, I've counted like five or six times about how he says, go tell no man. The first one was when the, when the leprous man was healed. The leprous man was healed, and, and he uh, leprosy is a skin disorder, and really it, it hurts and it's painful, and they were outcasts of the city, and you, you had to be thrown out of the city because of this horrible disease. And after he had healed this, man the bible says he had told him don't tell anybody what i did can you imagine it? he said go back to the priest just uh, uh, uh show yourself and make sure he is clear as being clean he had to do this it was a tradition and then he said but don't tell anybody that i did it can you imagine a horrible disease. There was another time on the Mount of Transfiguration when Peter and John went up with Jesus and they, and they went up to pray. And the Bible says that he saw Moses and Elias who had been dead for several hundred years. And the Bible says, he says, Peter, don't tell anybody <laughs> what you just saw. And so uh, how can I keep this blessing? I, I saw a dead man, Moses, the one I read about as a child. I saw him. You don't want me to say anything? There was another time, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, 
When the Bible says that there was a man who was deaf and, and he was dumb, in other words, he couldn't speak. And the Bible says that he took his fingers and, and put it in his ears. And the Bible says he spit on the ground and touched, uh, uh, he touched his tongue uh, and his eyes. And the Bible says he sighed. Uh, 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 and the Bible says that his eyes were open and his ears were open. And he began to see. And the Bible says here how he charges this man, don't go tell anybody what has happened to you. There was another time when he says, don't share this information. And he says, and beyond measure, astonished, saying, he says, he had done all things well. He says, make it the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. And he's telling me not to say anything. Can you imagine? In Luke chapter 8, also tells, he says, and all well and be well to her. He says, and, and, and about this young daughter, it was another occasion when Jesus said, don't say anything. There was a young girl who had died. And, and the Bible says that they, they, they were crying in the other room. And, and when Jesus showed up, they said, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. And they, the Bible says they laughed her to scorn. And the Bible says he cleared him out the room and he went in and he told the young girl, he says, get up and walk. He says, arise, young maid. He says, young maid, arise. And the spirit came again and straightway, the Bible says, and he commanded her uh, that was at meat and, and her parents were astonished. He says, in charge, he charged them, don't say anything. And so we see this over and over and over again. I'm going to give you one more here. Another time he told Peter again a second time not to say anything was this. The Bible says that uh, he had took a survey and he asked these people, he said, who do they say that I am? He said, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elias. Some say you're one of the prophets. And he said, but who you say I am? He said, I am the Christ. And he went on and says it today, but go tell no man this. What did you just say? Can you imagine this? And so the Bible says, and how can I keep this in? He says, how can I keep this blessing back? And, and, and it was all the reason why he had them do this because it was not at that moment his time to die. If he would have started saying this in the word but got out that he was the man, uh, they would have killed him years before. But you see here today, it was all for the purpose of him not being ready to be crucified yet. And, and so we find it. And there was another case in here where uh, 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 he, t but on the opposite end that he told them to go tell him who he was. There was a man named John. The Bible says John the Baptist, the one who was the loudest of them all. <laughs> he was the biggest spokesman for Jesus for many years. He was the biggest spokesman about Christ coming. He was a loud mouth for Jesus, if you please. He was he would he would have no hesitation to tell people about God. He was the forerunner, the Bible says, for Christ. But the Bible says something had changed in the man's life, and he was uh, uh, thrown in the jail because, again, uh, the, the, the ruler of the day was offended at his preaching, if you believe, and, and the things that he had said to him. And so they threw him in jail. And now this man, this man was uh, John the Baptist, was now confused in his mind. And then when his disciples came to visit him, he says, go ask Jesus, is he the one? Go ask Jesus. Is he the one or do we need to look for another? And Jesus responded back on the flip side of this. He said, I want you to do this. I want you to go tell John that the uh, blinded uh, eyes are open, that the lame walk, that the deaf hear, and that the dead are raised and the poor have the gospel been proclaimed or preached uh, to them. He said, go and tell John and all the rest of them to share this blessing. Amen. To go share the blessing uh, again. And, and so I, I'll back, backtrack a little bit here to that day of that funeral. I, I was there. And as I began to look around the room on this past Monday, I began to say, my God, there's a lot of folks that don't know the Lord. And sometimes you get people to come up and say something good for the Lord. And they was letting words go loose. that wasn't supposed to be said in church. We weren't in the church anyway. But I said, my God, there's a crowd in here that does not know the Lord. And they need the gospel to be shared with them. They need this blessing to be shared with them. They need the word of God to go forth and to hear the word of God. And so we was got an opportunity, a fourth opportunity to tell them about Jesus. Amen. To tell them about the Lord and, and really to share the blessing. 
So when we, as here, it's just like John uh, was told, he says, go tell John about the gospel being preached and go tell the world. And so Jesus, after, after he had died and rose again, he had given them the great commission to go out and say, hey, go tell them, go tell the world in the highways and the byways and all of the regions. He says, go tell them about me. Go tell them about the good news. Go tell them again that I love them tonight. And so today to share the blessing with others, amen, to be a blessing to others today. Day. And so that blessing of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ this season today, people need the gospel. Amen. People need the Lord. And so really our heart was really uh, moved because these folks, you can tell that they didn't know the Lord. You can tell that they didn't know. I didn't get too many amens at that funeral. Didn't get too many head nods either. But to begin to see, I said, my God, and I shared with uh, one of the reverends, I said, my God, <clears throat> there's so much work to be done. There's so much work to be done. Souls need to know the Lord. And so to uh, share the blessing, to share the blessing of the gospel, to share the blessings of your testimony of how God changed you, or how God saved you, how God delivered you, amen, how God is making changes in your life. Be a blessing to somebody else. Be a blessing by praying with somebody. Be a blessing to help someone along the way. And so to back to our text, the Bible says that Jude, uh, again, in the book of Jude here, uh, he, he began to share with them about the being a blessing or sharing a blessing. First of all, he showed them how the, um, the, the in his days uh, sharing a blessing with the ungodly in the verses 17 to 18. He says, beloved, the, he says there will be mockers in the last days who go after their un ungodly lusts and of their ungodly ways or sinful ways. He says, but we must share the blessing with the ungodly to let them know that there is a better way, to let them know that this Jesus is still the answer whether they laugh or not, whether they receive it or not. Tell them all about it. Amen. To tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. He says, with the ungodly tell them he says go out and tell them even in the last days even when they don't want to hear even when they don't uh, they may take the fly and throw it on the ground even if they don't click on the video amen continue to get the good news out to many women that many women can know the Lord Jesus Christ share with the ungodly wherever we go in the malls in the streets wherever it may be represent the kingdom of almighty God tonight in verse 19 he went on and says to, to the, uh, he says they are separate uh, they are, are separate sensual having not the spirit share the good news share the blessing with those that don't have the spirit hey amen again we see here today there's a evil world and an evil spirit out there but it does not uh, stand to the holy ghost moving of the holy ghost and many women tonight as we, we walk in the holy spirit we share the holy ghost with people we we allow them to see the holy ghost in us i should say we begin to let them know again that they, they need the spirit of god they need to see the joy and satisfaction that we sang from this go. They need to see the peace of God ruling in your life. They need to see the love of God outpouring from, because of the Spirit of God. They need to see how you can overcome through the Spirit of long, because of long suffering. The Spirit of God helps you with long suffering. I should say, they need to see the gentleness and, and kindness of a believer today. The world needs, amen, true believers. They, we need to share this out with people today, amen. And so let's continue on. The Bible says, he says in verse 20, he says, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost is what uh, the Jew, the writer here in Jude says and so how do we we, we keep sharing how do you keep sharing the gospel we need to share it because the spirit of God will help you share it is what I want to say the spirit of God will help you share it the spirit of God and so he says we must stay prayed in the Holy Ghost we must continue to walk in the spirit of almighty God prayed up and in tune with God see when we're in tune with God we'll be in tune with others to see the need to be in need, see the need in their lives, to have compassion upon the laws, to see many women saved, and so to share the blessing with others. The Bible goes on and says in verse 21, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of God, of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Keeping your eyes on him reminds us of the blessing, to keep our minds on him, to keep your eyes on the, on the prize, Keep your eyes on the cross. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And no doubt this will help you and it will keep you from falling. 
It will keep you from falling so you can be a blessing along the way. Amen. To keep your eyes upon the Lord. Keep your eyes upon him. Keep your eyes on that blessing of eternal life. Keep your eyes on all the blessings that he's blessed you with through the years of your life. The blessing of salvation. The blessing of just watching over and keeping all the days of your life. Keep your eyes and never deter from those things. Even when the going gets rough in your life. Just set your mind back on Christ and say, you know what? God is good to us in spite of, in spite of all that we face. You begin to keep your eyes on the goodness of God. And the Bible goes on as we move on. He says, uh, again, in, in verse 22, he says, in some having compassion, making a difference. And so the, uh, he, he brings about about sharing a blessing of being a blessing, sharing the blessing with others. And so the spirit of compassion, all those things that Jesus was able to do was because of compassion. The apostles of old and even the Christians uh, of past and of today, we must move with compassion. Amen. Love will go a long way, along the way. Love will carry us. Love does a lot. Amen. The blessing of love and compassion in our world today. He says, saving others with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Even the garments hated, spotted by the flesh. Hating the garments spotted by the flesh. So he was referring to how to, again, I reminded every time I heard about this, a firefighter that reaches down and pulls somebody out the fire. A firefighter, not everybody's willing to do that type of work. Not everybody's willing to be an EMS worker. Not everybody's willing to work in the nursing home or in, in a place, uh, again, that's not always the best uh, uh, conditions that you have to face in life. But we see how they, again, he says, pull them out of the fire. And he's referring to the flames of hell, the fires of life, where people are destined every moment of our life. People, as we've been in the service, have gone on into eternity over and over and over again. And so he says, we must continue to be a blessing to somebody. Go out and tell somebody. Go out and share with somebody. Reach out a hand to help somebody and say, hey, why don't you come to service with us? Hey, why don't you, uh, again, uh, tune into the broadcast. Hey, why don't you, uh, there's a man named Jesus. Hey, let me pray with you. Hey, uh, again, and on and on and on. And how do we endeavor? to pull men and women out of the flames that they find themselves in as we speak tonight. So being a blessing, a hand of blessing out to others. The Bible says now unto him is able to keep you from falling. He says and presents you fallers before the presence of glory, of his glory and joy. Amen. We see here today God is able to keep you along the way. As you continue to uh, uh, serve and live for him, live for Christ, he'll keep you. As you keep being a blessing, God's going to keep you. Amen. You continue to be a blessing. You continue to stay on the firing line. You continue to say, I'll be faithful. I'll be a blessing to God. Amen. And God will keep you. Amen. If in spite of whatever's going on, he says he's able to keep you from falling. Keep you from falling. He'll keep you. He'll, he'll watch over you. He'll do these things because you have been a blessing to someone else. Hey, man, again, it's talking about the law of sowing and reaping. When we sow, to, again, uh, to, to good things, no doubt we will reap good things. The Bible says when we sow the negativity, we sow the evil, we sow the corruption, we'll reap corruption as well. But I encourage you tonight to sow to blessings. Hey, Amen. How can I be a blessing to someone else? I was listening to the radio. These folks raised $100,000 in a couple of hours. I said, my God. They, raised, they was raising money for the toys and all these different things. I said, man, that's a blessing. A real blessing is really just trying to bring a smile to somebody's face. To be a blessing to somebody else. In church today, there's an old song, even in this hymn book, it's called Make Me a Blessing. Make me a blessing, Lord. Allow me, amen, to be used by you to get here today to represent you or to help someone along the way to pull them out of the fire, to help encourage them, or to help pull them out of the mess. And so we see today, God, help me share the blessing. Help me encourage somebody. Help me uh, point them to the Lord today. And so all these different things that Jesus did, even though they told them to be quiet back then, it was going to be a blessing in the long run. It was going to be a blessing again. And so naturally he would want the news to get out eventually. And so, yes, the news, we continue to let the world know that Jesus does save. Amen. 
time that Jesus still does heal. Jesus still transforms lives. Today, my friend, today I'm telling you, you don't have to stay where you are. You don't have to stay in the conditions you are. There is a way out tonight. That way out is through Christ Jesus tonight. There is hope in your life tonight. There's hope and joy if you would just come and, and seek him out. I'm telling you today, come over on the blessed side today. There's so many things in store for you. Amen. Sharing the blessing to tell somebody that Jesus loves them. Man. Telling somebody God can help you. Sharing with somebody, again, a helping hand. And truly, all these different things, no doubt we see. Let's be a blessing in this season of giving. Let's be a blessing to somebody. Let's tell somebody about the Lord. Because, again, it was really moved in my heart. I, I looked over the congregation the other day, and I said, my God, they need the Lord. I thought about her children. I said, man, they're going to need Jesus. And I began to pray for the family. I prayed over the congregation. I said, Lord, put your hands on these folks. God, help them. Help them to know you. Help them to come and, and receive you, God. Help them, Lord, to be a blessing. Amen. Help them to receive the blessing of salvation, eternal life, power of the Holy Ghost, and all the things that come along with knowing him. I mean, say it's a blessing to serve Jesus. Amen. Amen. And brothers and sisters, let's go out and tell somebody else about the Lord. You may see somebody in need along the way, on the way back home, or throughout the weekend, or whatever the case may be. Reach out and give them a flyer. Tell them, amen, a smile at them. Sometimes a smile is a blessing, amen. To give them some, make them laugh, or do something to lift people's spirits up in this world. You know, I, I didn't really, I didn't, come on now, I didn't really understand at the time, but people said holidays can be a very depressing time. I didn't realize this. The holiday season can be a real depressing time and for some because they feel a sense of loneliness or they feel as if, again, uh, they're not, they're, they have no one else to be with. Amen. And so, uh, again, by, again, that's why we say that, again, the how to, it can all, but at the same time, it's going to be a good time for someone to come to Christ. Someone to come to Christ. Amen. And so we, we encourage you and I to go out and invite someone, tell someone to share with someone the good news of Jesus Christ. Let them know about the greatest gift of all, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's make that our prayer. Lord, help us to be a blessing to this community, to be a blessing to this city, to be a blessing to our families and our friends and loved ones, strangers, whoever it may be. Amen. God, help us to be a blessing to someone else. The church here today, let us be that lighthouse. That one that's sitting in darkness and you give them light and, and, and it, it'll brighten their day. Or you give them hope. Amen. Let that be our prayer. Let that be our mission. Amen. To be a blessing to the world today. Jesus was that. And no doubt let us also be followers of that same, that same path as he was. Let us follow his, in his steps to be a blessing to the world. Amen. Let's bow our heads in reference to God tonight. As we look to God in prayer, you make that your prayer. Say, God, help me be a blessing. Help me to be a blessing. Make me a blessing, Lord. God, my hands, my feet, my thoughts, my heart, my mind. God, let me, God, be usable by you. Tonight, and we want to also give an invitation. If you don't know him tonight, I want to let you know that there's a blessing in store if you will receive Christ as your Lord. If you will receive Jesus as your Savior. Receive him, the one who came, that greatest gift of all, came and gave his life for all of mankind. Died on that cross, shed his innocent blood. And that blood was shed to wash away all of our sins, all of our past, all of our failures. He gives us a new slate. What a blessing it is to be renewed, to give a new opportunity to live. My friend today, if you would accept it today, ask the Lord into your heart. Profess him as Christ. Profess him as Lord. Say, Jesus, you are my Lord. I accept you as Lord tonight. I want to receive you into my heart tonight. I give you my life. Serve him from this day forward. Make him your king. Make him your Lord. And from this day forward, you'll be a new man, new woman, new creature, new start on life. What a blessing it is. For the believers tonight, let us be blessings in our community. Let us be a blessing to someone else, to your brother, your sister, your loved ones. Say, God, use me. These hands, these feet, Lord, to reach out to somebody, to deal with somebody, to touch somebody, to impact somebody, to make a difference. To make a difference, amen, in someone else's life. To make a difference, to put a smile on somebody's face. Pick up the phone and call somebody. 
to reach out and say, hey, God loves you. Thanks for thinking about you, praying for you. Just checking on you, see how you're doing. Be a blessing. My sister the other day told me about how that she wrote a letter weekly, I think it is. Every couple of weeks they write an anonymous letter just to someone. But they know, they know them, they know the person. And once they called and they called them later and they say, wow, that was the most beautiful letter I received. It lifted my day. Be surprised how that blessing and do dark times that she shared me. I uh, continue to pray for my cousin, how the, her son committed suicide the other day. And when she had sent out this letter, that letter came just a few days, or just after, excuse me, a few days after she had uh, found out that her son had committed suicide. And it was a blessing to uplift her. You'd be surprised what a card would do, what a, what a, a bouquet of flowers would do to go out of our way to be a blessing. Amen. And, and most important, to share with them the good news of Jesus Christ. My friend today, let's be a blessing in this season to someone else. Amen. Let us share the blessing. Share the blessing by being a blessing with others. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. God, for the service. We thank you, God, for each one. God, we pray, God, that you can, God, again, speak to every heart. God, help us be used. Be moved with compassion as you was, to be moved and save someone out of the fires, to be moved to God, to love up on people, to care for people, to care for their soul, their well-being. And God, again here today, we follow your lead, God, and we pray, God, let us be shaping more like you, to be caring more like you, to be concerned more like you, to love souls as you love souls. And God, we just say thank you tonight, and we give you glory. Jesus name we pray. She sings a song here. Amen. Let us just take a few minutes to reflect on that. To be a blessing. Amen to others. Amen. God bless you. needs him every day. Jesus.
last night. That's where the blessings come from. That's where the true joy comes. Salvation. Amen. For all mankind to know, receive. Amen. The blessing. One Jesus tonight. Amen. We look forward to seeing you this weekend. Come on out and be with us. Amen. 11 a.m. Sunday morning. Come on out. Bring somebody with you. It's the house of the Lord. We look forward to what God's going to do. And again, we say share, share, share. Amen. The videos, the, the flyers. Tell somebody. Be a blessing to somebody during this holiday season and beyond. Let us have the same love of Christ, the same compassion that Jesus had. Amen. As we stand to our feet today and dismiss in prayer, we're going to ask Reverend to dismiss us tonight. Amen. We look forward to seeing you this weekend. God bless you. Thank you.